Hey guys, it's Katie. So I want to create a veneer that I'll use at some point. I don't know when, but I want to get some veneers created so I have stuff to use. And what I'm going to use is, this is scrap, mainly white and translucent. It might have a little other tint in it. So I'm going to use that, and then I'm going to use some Kato white that I've had chopped up in a bag for a while. So I'm going to get this, and this is probably Primo, and I don't know what's in here. But... I always mix these kinds. It doesn't really matter. I don't always, but I've mixed them plenty of times, and I just bake them at 275. Um, that's where I keep my oven. I always bake it really at 275, and um, the only time I don't is when I'm using, is it Cernet that bakes at a really low temperature? I think it's Cernet. It bakes at like 130 or some kind of weird low temperature so that's the only time I lower it down but usually when I use a combination of clays I um, bake at 275 I do tent them always or cover them with a sheet of plain parchment or some kind of paper but I'm gonna get this mixed up till I have one solid color and then I'm gonna get some alcohol inks and I want to kind of create a veneer I'm also gonna get some probably circle cutters Maybe a couple stamps. I don't know. I just want to create a cool, funky-looking veneer and see what we can come up with. Okay, and I even added in here some Sculpey 3 white that I have that I'm trying to use up. Um, because I have Primo and, Kato, uh, Primo and Kato, it should be add some strength. I mean, it's definitely not a lot of Sculpey 3, but I'm going to cut this in half. I want to try to make, like, two veneers. And so what I'm doing is I'm setting it on a tile, but on a piece of my recycling here. That's a kind of a glossy cardstock. And that way I don't make a mess of my work surface. And it's okay. I got some, like, lint pieces in there. I don't know if you could see it. Some dust and stuff. But we're going to cover this with inks. Um, my other one I'll just set aside for now. Okay. So I want to see what we can come up with. Some kind of funky, cool-looking thing. I don't know what, but we'll see. So first thing on this one, maybe we'll make two. With one half we'll make one and one half we'll make another. I'm going to grab some of my small cut round cutters. And I'm going to use the plastic side of it because I want something thicker. Um, like this side, I want to just make impressions. I don't want to actually cut anything. Or you could use even like, I have these square cutters and I have a really small one. You could even use those. Let's try the circle first. Let's see what we can come up with. Where's my pill bottle right there? Okay. So I'm gonna take this big one, and I got these cutters, let's see. And they have a plastic side, so I'm gonna use that to make an impression. And I'm just gonna make some, don't cut through, you just wanna make an indent in it. I'm so bad at random, do you see that? Like I feel like it comes in a line. make sure I don't push too hard. So I'm just going to make some circles all over the place and then I might use a smaller one as well. They can overlap, it's fine. Just have fun. This is like, ooh, push that back together. I don't want to cut through. Just have fun with it. Really just, this one's going to be like about playing and experimenting and having fun. I feel like I'm missing a couple. They fell on the floor one day because the dogs started barking and freaking out. And I feel like I'm missing... There used to be like a yellow one, I think. It's got to be on my floor somewhere. This one's got like a little indent out of it. I'm getting like a little... You see it right there? Right there? This one's not super round, but that's okay. Because... It's about the whole, not about one tiny little part of the whole. You know, the whole project, I mean, not just like the circle. Okay, maybe one more. Let's see, are these the same? Nope, not the same size.
this one's going to be busy, I assume, obviously, because I'm... And you can make circle inside of circle inside of circle. I mean, I'm just kind of going random for it. And then I may take, like, a dotting tool, a small dotting tool, if I can find one. I'm thinking in my head of where ink is going to pool. So I'm going to use alcohol inks. Oh, I also... I just went through all my mixed media supplies is really what I was doing. And I had some archival inks that I ordered right when I started using clay. So then I got out of it. But I can always use those archival, the Ranger stamp pads. Um, I'm going to use those on this. But they're not even open. Like I, I ordered them and I was planning on making something. And then I got into using polymer clay and then I kind of halted on it. Have you can also use like things like Inca Golds as well, but I don't think that color is going to go with what I want. I'll keep it out just in case. Okay, so there's that. Let me grab my alcohol inks, and you're going to need some kind of mister either. Ideally, you'd be using alcohol, but you can also use water. I'm going to use some 70% alcohol. And then I have water as well. Because, unfortunately, if we spray too much alcohol on our veneer, it'll start to make it dry out. And I don't want that to happen. So now, my goal is just to get everything to kind of settle down into the grooves, more or less. If, that, if I can possibly make that happen. And we'll see if I can or not. You know what I might do? I might grab a little, if you have any little pipettes, those would work awesome. Which I think I used to, but I have no clue if I could find it in this moment. Let me see if I could find some. Hang on one sec. I found one little pipette. That's it. When I first started using alcohol inks for actual art. Um, well, that ain't going to work. So, <laughs> I mean, I could use one, but whatever. If you guys haven't realized... I don't spend a lot of money on anything. I don't travel. I haven't traveled in five years. I'd love to travel at some point. If I spend money on anything, it's art supplies. Um, I do all kinds of art, and the supplies you buy really last a long time. Um, I have mixed media supplies, mosaic supplies, wood burning supplies, all kinds of stuff. I'm thinking and investing in a Lu uh, Lucy clay slicer, the nice one, um, because I feel like, one, I'll save clay on my veneers by cutting them nicely. And two, you can use that for probably ever, you know. Um, and even like this Inca Gold. I've had this Inca Gold for like two years, okay. I left the layer on it. This one got kind of mushy. But look how much there is in it. I mean, it's all kind of tilted to the side. Usually they're firmer than this. This one's really soft. But like, wait, let me grab one of my other Inca kind of gold. My waxes. So I don't use these on polymer clay. I actually should test and see if you can. These are the Art Alchemy Antique Waxes. But look how much is in there. I've had these for such a long time. And I've barely used anything. So, you know, you really can... Your art supplies last a long time. I have some paint brushes that I had when I first started oil painting in ninth grade. And I'm 31. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... And I still have oil paints that my parents bought me in ninth grade for my first paints that, that last. So invest. It's an investment. Yes, it is. But buy a little bit here and there. I mean, you don't need to go crazy all at once. But, you know, one pack of alcohol inks once a month. You know, they come in three packs. Okay, so there's 15 bucks. You know, if you cut out, I make my breakfast anymore every morning. I don't go buy the $3 coffee anymore. You know, stuff like that. So, anyways, that's my little rant on people saying they don't have money for certain things. It's just really what you want to invest in. I work at a dental office and people say all the time they don't have money on their teeth to spend on their teeth for a cleaning. Um, unfortunately, they don't come in for 10 years. They don't get that $100 cleaning, $150 cleaning and x-rays once a year. And then they come in in five years and they need a root canal and a crown, which would have been a $200 filling now costs you three grand to fix that tooth. So it really didn't save money. Sorry.
I need to stop ranting. I'm sorry, guys. Love you. So I think what I'm going to do... I'm contemplating. We're playing here because I've never done this one. So I'm going to save black. I do think I want to use black, and I actually need to get some more black because I've had that black for two years or so, and it's almost gone. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think of what theme. I do have now these um, pearl alcohol inks, which I really like. But I'm thinking I want to... I have to think of colors that will blend well together, too. I actually like this uh, pebble. It's like a brownie gray. I'm just kind of going through my colors here and checking out what kind of colors I want to use for this. I need to get a better purple. I really do because I don't have a good purple. And I would say you probably want to start with your light colors and then your dark have a scrap paper towel ready to blot up any excess. So let's see. This is aqua. And I'm going to try to drip it, attempt to drip it down into the grooves, but once we move it all around, it will kind of go down in there anyways. As you know, I usually make double pendants, so let me wipe this up before it gets all stuck on there. Um, this would just be one half of a pendant. I like this color. This color's pretty. Okay. So that was the Ranger Aqua. It's a pretty color. I don't really think I need to mist at all because it's okay. Let's maybe use some Ranger Mermaid. It's like some of the bottles are different now. Let's see. It's definitely dark. It's more of a dark green. use the pool. I guess this is going to be more like a blue-green tone. I am going to add some pinks in there, which if it mixes will get add some purpley kind of tones. I don't have a good purple that I like. Okay, that was the pool. And then this is the raspberry. And look, I have just a tiny little bit left in there. See how it's making a purple? Well, obviously pink and blue make purple. Paper towel is making kind of a cool pattern. Okay. I think I do want to add a little bit of this pebble color because I, I like this color. like a tea or coffee color you know and this is you you're not gonna be able to mimic this well exactly you can use the technique but you're not gonna be able to copy my technique exactly there's no way that even I'd be able to re 
replicate this. So I'm going to take a mist and I'm using 70%, just regular isopropyl alcohol. And I'm going to just kind of mist that. I don't want it to get crazy muddy, but I do want less white. And then what I think I'm going to do is let this dry a little bit and then I'm going to flatten it out to get rid of the indents and I think I'm going to stamp on top of it. This is what I think I'm going to do. I grab some stamps. I don't have a lot of rubber stamps. But I have like this pack I got and I got it for the font. But I ha they have these ink blotches and I might use some of those with the black. Because black is good as long as it's in a small amount, especially when you're doing like mixed media art. So I may just let this dry for a minute. And then I may do, yep, okay, let me pause, let this dry for a minute. While it's drying, I'm going to take it off this cardstock and wipe up the, um, the cardstock so it doesn't sit in the alcohol if I can help it. I don't want it just to sit in the alcohol that I just missed it on there. Oop. Those are two I cut through a little further. That's okay. I'll we'll mush them back together. And you can wear gloves if you don't want to make yourself a mess. It's okay. Piece it back together in a sec. Because I have Sculpey 3 in it, it's really sticky. Come on, lay down. Hole. And you could use this and just take the circles out and add it on. That'd be kind of cool. Might be neat, actually. If I just take those circles off and use them. doesn't need to be perfectly matched up, it really doesn't. This is all about just having fun. Where did that one go? Here. A little hole there somewhere, that's okay. Let's put that one there. Oh, that Sculpey 3 is so soft. It's ridiculous. Even just a little bit. I should have let it dry a little longer before I even attempted to pick it up. You know what I might do? I might take these circles. No, I'm okay with it the way it is. Even though it kind of fell apart, we're going to flatten it out. It's because the ink got underneath it. Made it really soft with Sculpey 3. I shouldn't have used it, but I want to use it up. I'm like really trying to use it up or attempting to use it up. I'm just sticking them back together. It really doesn't matter if they're perfectly put back together or not. dog wants to come inside. So because it fell apart, I may need to put a little backing on here just to get it to stay together a little better. 
and it was out on, uh, rolled out on a three, which is fairly thin on my pasta machine. So I can also uh, yeah, my dog's scratching at the door. Just trying to piece it together. But really, only me and you knew what this looked like two seconds ago. Me and whoever watches this veneer. <laughs> I don't know, I still think it looks cool. So even though there's little patches, I'll get enough to cut out a piece. Okay, I gotta go let my dog in. I'll be right back. That will finish drying. I shouldn't have used a Sculpey 3. Don't use the Sculpey 3. I shouldn't have mixed it. I was just trying to use it up. Bit me in the ass, really. Okay, hang on, I gotta let him in. He's yelping. I'm gonna take a piece of scrap, just translucent. I think it was from my butterfly one the other day. Translucent and white. And I'm gonna roll it out on a thinner setting. I'm just wiping up any of the um, alcohol ink with it. I'm gonna roll it out on a thinner setting and put this veneer on it. I think it looks cool. I think it will look neat and a half a pendant for sure. Let me get a piece of scrap something rolled out so I can fit this on it. Okay, I have this piece of scrap and I set it on a piece of parchment, which is probably what I should have done the first time. And that way I could have peeled it off a little better. If it's on parchment, I'm going to try to pick this up now that it's a little drier in one piece. I'm going to set this on here. Come on. Even the back looks kind of cool. And then I got this piece, but I can see I have a few little gaps in here, so I'm going to take little pieces. I'm going to try to stick it down in there and fill these little gaps that pulled apart. So again, I made a whoopsie. I um, didn't let it rest long enough before I tried to pick it up. Also, what you'll see on the second one we do, I'm going to put it on a piece of parchment because that way you can just peel it off. Um, it is what it is. I'm just trying to see if I have any other little gaps in the bulk of my veneer. There's one there maybe I want to fill. circles and set them in there. Why not? And one of these circles would probably make, you could do this with just the circles and make a, um, and just set the circles on some clay. God, Sculpey 3 sucks. I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Sculpey 3. It's just so weak. Even, not, even if, even if you can get it to work during your project, even when you bake it, it's just like super fine. It just doesn't, it breaks so easy. Your projects, all that you stuff you spent such a long time making. I started using Sculpey 3 and I was like making magnets with it. And then they just snapped because they were kind of 3D. And I was like, what the hell? Why'd I do that? Well, I learned better. Later.
I'm going to flatten this out. So. Okay. Now, let me get another piece of parchment. And honestly, if I was smart, I would just stop this video and make a new one. But I really think I can salvage this, and I'm not going to. Um, you guys can learn from that mistake and do it on your own. Not do what I did. Put it on a piece of parchment to start with, and then let it dry fully before you pick it up. So I'm going to roll this out. And burn it kind of burnish it all together I'm just feeling I'm just stretching it a little bit I'm okay with that Cutting off this scrap background because I can use that for something else. I don't care if my piece, my video is perfectly square, that doesn't bother me. Put some ink on my thing. Okay. Then I think I want to stamp some black some of these blotches on there I also have some butterfly stamps I could use but I think the splotches will look cool in this so I have I bought a set of archival inks and I have a pack of black here and I haven't even opened it so let me get the black out here and these are the ranger archival inks you could use stays on inks as well I do know stays on works. I also know the Ranger products work as well. Take a little acrylic block here. And I'm going to pick which one I want. Let's do the little one and the big one. These, uh, these were like $1.99. They took like five months for me to get them though. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's see. I'm just playing here. Because if I use this in an upcoming project and I don't show you how I did it, people will ask. So that's why I'm showing you. Okay, ready? And I don't want to really impress the texture. I just wanted to get it on there. So there's that one. This one. I don't know, they kind of remind me of coffee rings on a table. No? I like it. I think it looks cool, and I think with resin on it, it'll look really cool. I like it. I do. I like little ink blotches. Mm, I'm just contemplating if I want to put any more on there. It's hard to know when to stop, you know? You don't want to overdo it with something. I'm going to use this one's like this one here, this little pebbly one. I'm 
might just use a portion of this one somewhere down here. looks cool with the resin on it it'll shine it up you know I could have used some of those pearl inks um, and that would give us some mica in there that would have looked cool or some shimmer I'm just gonna clean my stamps off just using a little alcohol on this paper towel here I've used stamps on polymer clay. I mean, I've seen it done a million times, but I don't think I've actually done it yet myself. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, so these are all good to go. Once you take them off the thing, they never seem to stick back on well. Okay, so that's one veneer. Which I really like. And I could actually, you know, flatten it a little bit more. It's still a little textured. I didn't want the circles to actually be Textured. I just wanted rings. Kind of like a mica shift, you know? You make the rings and then you flatten it out. Okay, very little texture on there now. Okay, so there's one that I'll probably use in a project sometime. Now, this one, what was I planning on doing on this one? Let me think about what I'm going to do with this one. Okay, so I put it on a piece of parchment. And this one I think I'm going to use these archival inks rather than my loose inks. But your loose inks, if you put a drop out on something, just take some kind of sponge, a makeup sponge. This is that piece of fish tank filter I've showed you before. A little piece. If I can find the rest of it, I should cut a couple more pieces off. Let me find it and I'll actually show it to you. So this is it, this huge long piece I got. And it's from Amazon and it's called Fish Tank Filter is all I searched for. And it, I was using it for texture because I kept seeing Samantha um, would use a sponge similar to this to get a background. Hers is just thinner though. So I decided to see what I could find and that's what I found and it was like really cheap. So I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of this and they don't need to be big. You will get, when you cut it, you will get little black pieces that fling off of it. And that's why I was just like kind of flicking it off and brushing it off. I don't want to do it over my clay though. But this makes a nice texture for your backs. And I think I'm just going to, so this one is Paradise Teal try it and see what I can get. I don't actually want to make texture so I'm not pushing very hard. Okay. Maybe this uh, vibrant fuchsia. this gray maybe not but I like it maybe just a tiny bit of this purple use I'm a big purple fan myself okay so we have that 
And again, I'm going to take the alcohol. I'm going to actually use the 99% because it will probably dry faster. And once I add the alcohol, it will start to bring, make it move a little bit. It's going to start doing it like alcohol ink does. If you just watch it, it'll kind of move and do some fun stuff. You could also drip, put some drip drops of alcohol inks on there. Maybe I'll get some of the pearl colors that I have. This was this one's enchanted. This is the Ranger alcohol pearls. And you do have to shake them really well because the mica's on the bottom. And then I'm also going to stamp on this one too. I'm going to use my butterfly stamps when this dries a little bit. So I'm going to give this just another second to dry. It's almost dry. I'm going to get some stuff out of my way and I'll be right back. So what I'm thinking what I'll do now is use the gray so it's kind of more in the background. And I'll put some butterflies on stamped on with the gray and maybe I'll emboss later with black. And that way I have kind of a two-toned effect. So I have these different stamps. This is Stampendous SSC1112. It says happy day. It has some daisies. I think I'm going to use that butterfly there. It has some ladybugs. And this one is, I don't really know. I don't, I really don't know. I don't keep the packaging. I've had them for a long time. When I was doing mixed media, you could put stencils on this. That might look cool, you know. Um, let me see what I got for stencil designs. I don't want to use any stencils on here. Mm. Silk screen on top of that would look cool. This is Artistic Anarchy N0106M. When I started making videos, then I started writing stuff on it. But a lot of the things I don't. I don't want this one to get too busy though. I mean, it's already busy. I think I'm going to leave that. Maybe we'll do something like that later. Okay, so I think I'm going to do this butterfly on this uh, stupendous one. And I'm going to do him in the gray and see how he shows up, but he's going to be like in the background again. This is shadow gray archival ink that I'm using. it a little bit. Looks kind of cool, huh?
And when we do this in a project, again, I'll probably, I'm going to emboss on top of that. I really think I am <clears throat> with the other butterflies. Okay, so then this one's done as well. So those are two kind of cool looking paneers. I do like this one. Especially once resin goes on top of it. And I do like this one too. Two totally different looks with just some alcohol inks. So I think that's where I'm going to end this and then I'll think of a project to put all of these in. And I think we'll um, emboss on top of this one. A big butterfly on top of that one. Or however big I can fit on top of my pendant. You could even use just a portion of it, you know? Okay.